In this video, what we're going to do is implement a scriptable object for a damage configuration that will allow us to, in a single control, optionally do constant damage, random damage between two values, have damage fall off based on distance, and random values with damage fall off. Of course, we can't do damage without having a damaging system. So we'll have to implement also a way to very easily be able to detect when we should be able to damage something and apply damage to that object. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who? Me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by helping you make a highly customizable gun system for your game that can actually do damage now. There's really two main topics we're covering today. One is the actual scriptable object to do damage, and one is the little system to apply damage to a given object. So we're gonna quickly go over that because it's not technically part of the gun system, but you need some kind of system for that to make the guns work. Conceptually, this is really simple. We're gonna make an interface that says, this thing can be damaged. Anything that can be damaged will then implement that interface and do whatever behaviors need to happen. We're going to raise events whenever we get damaged and whenever we die. In the repository, there's also a script that will catch those events and play animations based on whenever the damage is taken. Honestly, that was just a little bit of fun that I had. I don't think I'm going to cover it in this video. Probably I'll make a separate video on how you can do that system in a little bit more depth. So once we know how we can take damage and die, then we need to just define for our guns, how do we take damage? So we're going to define a new scriptable object, the damage configuration. It's only going to have one field, but I can imagine there's many options for you to extend that for more than just the one. Like for example, in StarCraft 1, specific units maybe do less damage based on the type of enemy they're hitting. So if you were gonna do something like that, you'd add some damage multiplier or something based on size and add that into the damage config as well. I think conceptually that's it. It's pretty straightforward on what we're gonna do. Let's hop into the code and check it out. We'll start today with making the iDamageable interface, which is an interface that anything that should take damage should implement. We'll remove all the default mono behavior stuff and make it a simple public interface iDamageable. Generally, I expect we're gonna to need to know the max health something should have and its current health. We'll define those as public ints with only a getter defined, so in our implementations, we can have a private set. We'll define two event types here, a public delegate void take damage event that accepts an int for damage. We'll have a public event of take damage event type called on take damage, and we'll raise that anytime that we take damage. The second one would be a public delegate void death event, and I'm picking arbitrarily that we want to know the position. You can put whatever arguments you need here based on your own game's needs. That will also have a public event death event on death that we will raise only once whenever we hit zero life. The only function I think we need to expose here is a public void take damage with how much damage we're going to take. With this defined in the gun scriptable object, whenever we are playing this trail, that's showing us that tracer, right? I'm gonna choose at the very end after we've made contact with whatever thing we hit. In here, we will call damageable.take damage. But how do we choose how much damage to give them? An excellent question that you asked. At the top of the gun scriptable object, we'll add a damage config scriptable object. And then let's go and check out what are we gonna put in there. As usual, we will make it extend a scriptable object. We'll add the create asset menu, file name equals damage config, menu name of guns damage config, and an order of one. A very common thing that I'll see here is we just have like public int damage. And we'll define that in the Unity editor to say 10 or whatever it is. That's good, we could do that. But in a lot of games, maybe you have a damage range that you should pick from. So then maybe you'd have something like a public vector two int min max damage. And then it'd be a little bit weird because you'd have to define them both to be the same thing when you want a constant value. So that could work, still a little bit weird. But then we need to also talk about damage fall off. What if you want to implement when I shoot somebody really far away, they take less damage than this static damage and so on and so on. So there's a lot of ways that we can think about doing this. What I feel like works really well is if we use something called the min max curve, which I talked about in a video not too long ago about how to choose random values between two curves. This is the control from the particle system. And why I recommend to use this is we can make it be a constant value if you want a simple use case of only having damage equals 10. If you want to choose a random number between two numbers, that's also supported here. If you want to add in damage fall off, but you don't want random values, that's supported here as well. And if you want random values between two curves with damage fall off, 
that is also supported here. And I think that's probably one of the most complex damage scenarios. So that's what we're gonna implement here. I'm gonna implement private void reset, which is called whenever we create this object. And we're gonna set the min-max curve mode to be particle system curve mode dot curve. So whenever we create this by default, we're gonna get the curve editor. Using this makes it extremely simple for us to implement a public int get damage. And we'll put in a distance in here. So float distance equals zero. We'll just return a mathf dot seal to int damage curve dot evaluate distance, and then a random value for the second argument. That's only considered when we're doing random between two constants or between two curves. The damage curve evaluate will give us a float value. That's why we're choosing seal to int that's really all we're going to put in this one for now. In your game, there might be more complexities to calculating damage than simply based on distance, something like that you would also put into this scriptable object. So coming back to the gun scriptable object where we're going to take damage, all we need to add is damage config dot get damage, passing in the initial distance of that trail. And remember, distance was just the vector three distance between the start and the end point. It's really the only change of the gun system, but to actually make this like a fully complete, hey, somebody can take damage, let's go a little bit farther and implement enemy health. We'll make it implement the iDamageable interface. It will complain because we haven't implemented that interface. So I'll go ahead and do the auto complete for that. And it's going to give me a lot of grow new system not implemented exceptions. I'll create two backing fields for the max health and current health. Then we'll make current health point to the health and max health point to the max health. I'll serialize the health just so we can see it in the inspector. I think it's just convenient when you select the health to be able to see how much life do they currently have. On enable, we'll set the current health to be the max health. That way, if we're using an object pool or something, we'll always make sure that whenever they spawn, they have max health. The take damage, I think, is going to be pretty straightforward. We will define an int damage taken, and then we're going to clamp the damage that we took from zero to the current health, just to make sure that we're not subtracting out and going into the negative health. And we'll subtract the damage taken from the current health. We'll see if we actually did any damage, because maybe we shot somebody who was already dead. In those cases, we probably don't want to raise the on pick damage event. So as long as we did some damage, we'll raise on take damage with how much damage was taken. And we'll check if the current health is zero, but we did not take zero damage. So as long as we took damage and now we're dead, we will raise the on death with our current transform position. That's it. Now, destructible objects can actually behave the exact same as enemy health because we're raising events when things happen. What we're going to do is make a spawn particle system on death mono behavior that will attach to something that we want to be destroyed, attach enemy health to that as well. And whenever we have the death event raised from the enemy health, we will call something here damageable on death, which will instantiate a particle system whenever they die. You could also handle damage by, I don't know, applying some shader effects or something whenever you take certain amounts of damage. We're going to keep it kind of simple today with just the death event because interfaces don't show up in the inspector because they're not mono behaviors. What I'm going to do is on awake damageable equals get component i damageable. We'll also require component type of i damageable. So that way, whenever we add the spawn particle system on death, if we try to remove the enemy health, it won't work. We'll get an error. On the enemy mono behavior is where we're going to hook up relevant things from each script to each other. So that way each script doesn't have to know about each other. The enemy just knows what it has and kind of ties them together. On start, what I'm going to do is set up the health on take damage and health on die events by setting the on take damage to be the pain response dot handle pain and on death to be die. And on die, we're going to have the movement stop moving, which is going to disable the nav mesh agent. So they stop moving. When we die, we will also use the pain response to handle death. So the pain response is going to be responsible for handling the animator when we're taking pain or damage or death. I'm actually not going to go into the enemy pain response here. I think it would be a little bit better if I spent an entire video going over how to do something like this. It's not really required for us to implement this gun system, so I'm just going to kind of skip over that for the time being. I think the only important thing for our little demo is that the pain response will set the die trigger on the animator whenever this enemy has died. Back over in the Unity editor, I've selected my enemy prefab, and I already added a bunch of these scripts like enemy movement, nav mesh agent, gets added automatically by the movement. They're just wandering around the level. I'll link to the AI series video where I first implemented this if you're really curious about how does that script work. We'll drag that to the enemy. We'll drag the pain response. And an important thing is the enemy health has to be on the object that has a collider on it. 
because of the shape of this eyeball, I want them to not be able to take damage from the tendrils. They move a lot, it'd be hard to keep a collider on them, so I'm gonna have just a sphere collider. It's a little bit hard to see. I have a sphere collider around the eyeball itself, and this eyeball is on the enemy layer. So over here is where we're gonna add that enemy health. We'll apply that so all of my other enemies get all the stuff. We don't need to hook up enemy pain response. That should be all the setup for them. Let's also make a destructible object. I'm just going to select the random cube from this level, duplicate it, move it over closer to the player, change the material so we know that we can do something with it. On this box, I'll just add the enemy health, give it 25 life instead, change it to be on the enemy layer because that's one of the layers we consider when we're raycasting, and attach the spawn particle system on death. We'll also hook up the dust explosion particle system, which is from the Unity Particle Pack, to play when this dies. And for fun, let's add a rigid body, and we'll make three of them. Okay, that's pretty good, but we need to create the scriptable objects for the damage configs. In our assets guns folder, I'll create a new folder called damage. And under create guns, we now have damage config. We'll have that M4A1 damage config, where by default, it gives us a curve with damage of one. To show the most complicated case, what I'm going to do is set this to use the random between two curves. And on this curve, I'm going to set it at time zero, it will be 10 damage. And at time 30, it will be somewhere between two and three damage. And don't forget, the Unity Asset Store Black Friday sale is going on right now. If you're watching this when this first comes out, it's a bunch of assets on sale up to 70% off. So head over there, check it out. See if any of those assets will add value to your game. I've got an affiliate link in the description and a card on the screen. Now I'm thinking maybe isn't good, so let me go ahead and make it between 8 and 10 damage at 0. So the whole time it'll pick random values between this depending on how far away from the target we are. Anything after 30 will also follow this same path. So if we're more than 30 units away, it'll give us still between 2 and 3 damage. For the Glock, let's do a really simple case. The Glock will always do 5 damage. Don't forget to hook them back up on the main gun scriptable object. That should be it. Let's click play. It looks pretty cool. But when we try to shoot the moving targets, it's kind of impossible to aim. So what I did was make if you right click, we have the super cool aiming capability, which helps some, but it's still kind of hard to do because we don't have like a crosshair. So I'm going to set the shoulder offset of this rig to be a little bit over the right shoulder. I'm going to use this little circle crosshair that we're in a position somewhere close to the middle of the screen. This is super not accurate aiming, by the way. This is just so we can generally tell where we're going to shoot if we're holding the right mouse button. Now we have a general idea of where we're going to aim. We can blow up these boxes. Cool. We can shoot this guy. He dies and gets disappeared after he's dead. So that's pretty cool. We're going to stop there for today. I think the concept of what we're talking about today is relatively straightforward. We really only added a couple lines of code to our scriptable object system for the guns. It's more around how do we damage enemies and how do we have a cool system that will allow us to catch when an enemy takes damage, when they die, and do things on an event base. It's really extendable so you can implement that into your game without having to do a lot of rework or weird linking of stuff. Remember, the full project's available on GitHub. The model is not included. I don't have the rights to distribute that, but I have replaced it in the repository with something so that way you can still see stuff moving around and shoot at it. Uh, the aim system that's here right now is not very good. That's okay, we're gonna cover the aiming in a future video, probably. I need to figure that out still. This is part three of, I don't honestly know how many parts it's gonna be, but part three of the gun series. So if you wanna see more, make sure you like and subscribe so that way you can stay up to date whenever the new videos come out. I also wanna give a shout out to all of the Patreon supporters that I have. Without you, this channel just wouldn't be possible. You can go over there, patreon.com slash Academy, get your name up here on the screen, get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier and some other cool perks at the tremendous and phenomenal tier. At the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen, Andrew Albright, and at the awesome tier, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn Kay, Matt Parkin, Ivan, and Rulin. Thank you all for your support. I am incredibly grateful.